So we're going behind the screen. You've heard of Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, right? The game with the vampires and the cool music and surprisingly good writing and gameplay that's equal parts good and equal parts bad. I swear, every time I play that game, it feels like I'm back at 14, hanging out with my mall goth friends and brooding over the latest releases off of Metropolis Records, all while waiting for my mom to pick us all up. Those were the days, weren't they? Anyway, VTMB, believe it or not, was based off the tabletop game Vampire the Masquerade. You got to play as those vampires you played as in the game, with even more choices. In the video game, you only got access to 7 clans, whereas in the tabletop, you had access to 13 different clans. Bet you feel cheated now, huh? Anyway, you could also play as the Sabbat and learn lots more about them than the game would ever tell you about. Uh, though even though you played as the Sabbat, you'd probably be looked at as being an edgelord, though you are playing a game that was, well, at one point full of edgelords. Edge Emperor, if you will. Uh, I guess Mark Reinhagen, the creator of World of Darkness, takes that title at this point. The World of Darkness is made up of more than just vampires. You got werewolves, which you actually find at the end of VTMB, and mages, which I don't think were ever mentioned. You of course have, like, way more than that with things like wraiths, demons, mummies, changelings, and the like, and there are quite a bit of games in the wand line, surprisingly enough. It's hard to cover all of them, but the main three were Vampire the Masquerade, Werewolf the Apocalypse, and Mage the Ascension. In Vampire the Masquerade, you're playing in a personal horror setting. The premise of a lot of Chronicles, the game's word for campaign, had you not only balancing your own personal demon called the Beast, but you're also forced to balance literal vampire politics at the same time, all while trying to survive in the modern nights. As with the running theme of most of the games in the one line, VTM was more about role playing than it was anything else. Combat would happen, sure, but it was never the focus. The main focus for a lot of the earlier editions of the game was the struggle between the Anarchs, the Camarilla, Rilla, Rhea, I can never tell, there's so much conflict on this, and the Sabbat, as they struggled in the Jihad, the eternal struggle of vampires and the Antediluvians, the founders of the vampire clans. In Werewolf the Apocalypse, you're playing, well, werewolves, called Guru. In this setting, the players fight against the Worm, which is an evil spirit that looks to destroy nature for its own gain. Vampires fall under this Worm, too. There's also a reason why this game line is also called Furry Captain Planet. There's a big spooky corporation out to ruin nature called Pentex, and it's up to the furry planeteers to stop them and any other corporation out to do the same thing. I never really played this setting, nor the other setting, Mage, but it seems like this setting really appealed to the more hippie-esque nerds of the time, or... Furries. Hippie furries, probably. As for Mage of the Ascension, this is considered one of the best settings written for WAD. However, some people might find it unplayable as it's considered rather complex compared to VTM and WTA. Some people prefer reading the setting rather than playing it, as you have a bunch of mechanics that not only you as the player have to worry about, but you as the GM have to as well, even more so given the fact that, well, you're the GM. I won't get too deep into why it's complicated, but... At character creation, you have to worry about your avatars, your paradigm. Also, magic doesn't work necessarily well against people who don't believe in it, which can cause bad things like backlash to happen to you too. So, good luck trying to cast a magic missile at someone only for it to, well, have a blow up in your face and send you to another hell dimension where it's a bunch of LARP nerds eternally yelling magic missile at you base boosted 50 times. All that brings me to the point of mage. Most mages want everyone to believe in magic and ascend to be able to use magic too. If you're anything like me, World of Darkness fills a hole in my soul for that vampire roleplaying fix. And it's not sparkly, twinkly vampires either, but honest to god, scary vampire stuff. This might be because I'm part of the goth subculture or I like Queen of the Damned too much, 
but the game fills that hole quite nicely and it's not a rather complicated system either. And hey, if you don't like vampires, there's always mage, there's werewolf, there's wraith, there's changeling, there's hunter, there's mummy, there's kindred of east, there's... You get my point. If it doesn't fill a horror niche or some other sort of theme you're looking for, then obviously the game isn't for you. Mechanically outside of Mage, the game is rather simple to pick up and play as its main focus is storytelling over dice rolls, and the books even make heavy mention of limiting the amount of rolls you do. So if you're like me and having to worry about crunch is annoying to you, this is the rule set for you. Also supposedly there was a Street Fighter game based on the system too, but uh, good luck finding them anywhere but the internet as the... Uh, well, they're well out of print by now, and the only, uh, the only ones that are for sale on Amazon, well, they're for prices ranging from the near hundreds in the American money. So if you're a die-hard fan of White Wolf, Street Fighter, or, well, both, go for it. I won't stop you. I mean, I probably would, but I'm not there, so... If you want to get a better feel on how the game is played, too, there's a live play game put out by Geek and Sundry called L.A. by Night, and I highly recommend you watch it. So that was a hot minute, huh? It's hard for me to keep focus and stay motivated to do these videos, but I have to power through it. it took me a while to even get these words down to script, and with this episode, I really plan on forcing myself to do these more and more. Next month, at the time of writing this, Cyberpunk 2077 will be coming out November 19th, and that gives me an excuse to roll out a video talking about one of my most favorite companies of all time, Artal Saurian, and uh, probably one of my most favorite people of all time. The one... The only Maximum Mike, Mike Ponsbeck. You know what? I I uh, I lied. It's it's not coming out next month. It's coming out in uh, December. Yeah, I I lied. Oops. I've gone up on drugs so much. I don't think I can come down. I really don't.